Here's another KeepsakeCrafts.net video for House of Gems. Today we're making this great dangly bracelet using House of Gems citrine nuggets. So before we get started, I thought you might like to see the collection of beads that I gathered together to make this bracelet. I may or may not use all of these, but it started with these pretty citrine nuggets and these were kindly sent along to me by House of Gems to use and seeing these I thought I would do something autumnal then I added in various metallic beads and mostly in shades of copper and also a little bit of orange and black definitely makes it all gives it all some great contrast so this is what you can do with your bead stash is just pull out a whole bunch of things that you think will work and then as you're putting it together you can edit down. Now you see I've got all of my supplies sorted out and it's quite a pile of stuff but this is going to be a very full bracelet. So I've kind of sorted everything into the colors. So I've got yellows and oranges and the metallics. Oh, aren't these the cutest? I love these little birds. Some blacks and then finishing supplies, you'll need a clasp, a bit of chain, a whole bunch of head pins, you'll need two each, crimp covers, crimps, and wire protectors, bead stringing wire, and then if you have some beads that are top drilled, like these, with the hole going through the top part, you'll need some wire, and this is 22 gauge wire. You'll also need, or it's very useful, to have one of these little gauges, and I'll show you how to use it. A fine point sharpie, and then really our usual roundup of tools. Chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters, and crimping pliers. One thing I didn't mention in going through that big list of supplies is this, a strand of small beads or seed beads. The way this bracelet works is you have a strand of very small beads, like seed beads, strung under bead stringing wire, and then you make bead dangles with all your other larger beads, and the loops slide over these beads so that you have a very decorative bracelet full of bead dangles. But also we're going to put stopper beads about every inch because otherwise if you move your arm the right way, all of your dangles will end up at one end of the bracelet. So we have beads that will be too big for the wire wrap loops to go past, and that will keep them spread evenly throughout the bracelet. So I'm going to use these bicones as stoppers about every inch throughout the bracelet. So what we need to do is make our wire wrap loops big enough to go over these beads and that's where this little gauge comes in handy. I can just pop it over one of these beads and then slide it in and now I have a measurement. You measure from that line not the edge of the gauge and so you can see just under three millimeters. So I'm going to set this a little bit larger than that about three and a half millimeters and then check that spot on my round nose pliers. And as you can see, that's right at the base of my round nose pliers. If it was at a different spot, like you could see here, I have a Sharpie mark on here. That's at two millimeters, because that's a spot I use a lot. About three and a half millimeters is right at the base of my pliers. So I will make all of my loops there, and then we'll know that they'll slide over these beads. The next step is to make a wire wrap loops. And I'm going to make about 40 bead dangles for this bracelet. I want it to be very full. And the way you make those is take a head pin. Uh, it's nice to have some kind of small bead at the bottom, so I'll use one of these black cubes. And here's one of these citrine nuggets and then it's just the way you make any wrap loop. Take chain nose pliers, let me zoom in for you. Okay. Chain nose pliers, grab the wire right where it comes out of the last bead and bend that wire at a 90 degree angle. Tuck in your round nose pliers and remember we're going to tuck them in right at the base. I'm going to make a fairly large loop. Wrap around the pliers. 
pull out the pliers, reposition them so you can finish the loop. Now your wire is at a 90 degree angle. Hold on to that loop with one pair of chain nose pliers. Grab the end of the wire with the other pair and make a couple wraps. Use your wire cutters to trim off the excess. I got wonky. And then use chain nose pliers to tuck in that end of wire. For beads that are top drilled, like this teardrop pearl, you'll need to use a piece of wire to make your loops. This is about a three, three and a half inch piece of 22 gauge wire and I'm just going to slide it through there leaving about a half of an inch and then bend both wires up so that they're parallel. Let me zoom in a little for you. Crisscross the wires over the top of the bead and then use chain nose pliers to make each one parallel again cut off this shorter one to leave about an eighth of an inch. And then really we, after that we proceed the same as any other wrapped loop, except we're going to grasp the wires right there and then make our 90 degree bend. And then just like before, tuck in our round nose pliers. Remember we're doing it at the base to make a wide loop, a big loop. Wrap it around, reposition, hold on to that loop with one pair of pliers and with the other we'll be wrapping around both of these wires right here. And that's how you wire wrap a teardrop. So what you need to do now is put on some good music or listen to a good audiobook or podcast and make about 40 bead dangles, either top drilled or center drilled like this, with loops that are big enough to go over your strand of beads. Well, phew, here are all 40 of my bead dangles all wire wrapped. And now it's time to finish our bracelet. You'll need to cut yourself a length of bead stringing wire and then we will finish one end with a crimp and then a wire protector. I really need to get, let me zoom in for you, really need to get uh, some different color wire protectors. All I have is the gold, but it blends in fine. This little horseshoe shape thing. You go through one end of the wire protector and then through the other and you could see it keeps the wire from rubbing against anything. And then I'm going to slide on my length of chain. One end will be the length of chain and then the other end will be my clasp. And I'm squeezing that so that it's teardrop shaped. And then slide the crimp back through both ends of the wire. Slide it up to, not quite almost to, just leave a little bit of slack, you need a little room to put your crimp cover. And then go ahead and flatten. There we go. Flatten your crimp. I like to do this with chain nose pliers, but if you have good luck with crimping pliers, then by all means. Trim off the excess wire only after giving that a good tug and make sure that it's strong and it's holding. And then what I use the crimping pliers for is to add, 
sorry, crash bang, is to add the crimp cover, which is this little thing that looks like a donut with a bite taken out of it. But when you squeeze it, it ends up being shaped like a bead. So you put that bite right over your crimp, squeeze gently, and now it's covered, and it just looks like there's a bead there. So now it's time to start stringing, and the first thing I want to do is find out how many of these little beads will make, plus one of my uh, bigger beads makes an inch. So I've measured these, and actually I need seven of the little ones, and then one of the bigger ones. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of time, you can see all this stuff I have over here, and I'm going to divide these up into seven piles, one for each space. So this is why we needed to make our wire wrap dangles before we started stringing our bracelet, because they actually go on as we do it. So I've got my seven piles from my seven one inch sections and I'm just going to throw one little pile of these and see how they go right over the little beads but don't uh, go past the stoppers. So there's one bunch. Make sure, yep, make sure that they all go over the beads and then string on another stopper. Another seven of these little beads and another pile of dangles and repeat until you get to the end. Alrighty, so I've done with stringing and you can see there's a lot on here. So it's time to make sure that you've got all of this snugged up, that there aren't any wires in between the small beads, stretching it out. And then you're going to finish this end the same way you finish this end, by sliding on a crimp, the wire protector, back through the crimp, flattening it, and adding the crimp cover. So here it is with the other end finished. You can see there's a little bit of slack in the wire, but it actually will pull out. Uh, when you have a jump ring and something else on there, when there's any tension on it. So the final thing for this bracelet is to open a jump ring, add the clasp, add that to the other end of the wire, and then make sure your jump ring is closed securely, and your bracelet is done.